let's get into our early season power rankings. This is going to be part one. I don't know how often we're going to do these, but I'm going to keep a running tab of what our power rankings are so we can see how they fluctuate throughout the year. Um, so this is going to be our first edition power rankings 1.0. We're just doing top five um, with, with maybe an honorable mention or two because I will keep got two because it was tough to cut it to five. But mm -hmm. um, you want to start with the whoever you're – if you have, a, you have an honorable mention team, I don't. I I didn't honestly. Oh, okay, I'll right. throw mine out real quick. At like six A, six B. I I I got the Oklahoma City Thunder and I got the Houston Rockets. We already talked about the Rockets a ton, so I'm gonna leave that be. Um, but the Thunder, hey, they're here, bro. They are. They here. are. Mm -hmm. Big big win against the Suns last night. Um, where I still think no Bradley Beal right in this one, but it was I think it was KD. Um, uh, or not no Bradley Beal, no Devin Booker. No Booker, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. We got Bradley Beal. We got Kevin Durant. They can't guard. They can't guard Shea. Who can guard Shea, bro? Nobody can guard Shea. <laughs> Shea got 35. Jalen Williams got 31. Chet out here with the elite defense, still giving you 18, 6, and 4 with two blocks with all the unicorn-like stuff that you'd like to see from him. Josh Giddy with a double-double, 10 points, 10 assists, 6 rebounds. Lou Dort bringing the defensive intensity like he always does. Like, this is what we were hoping to see from this team after all these years of – tanking and you shut Shea down after like February so that you can get a good lottery pick and they're just trading for picks and trading for picks. This is the end result. And like, it's finally culminating. It feels like they are arriving like before our eyes. So shout out to them. They got some big wins on the season. They look good. They're a fun team to watch. If they're not one of your league pass teams, they should be for so, sure. I love watching. Okay. See, that's like, that might be like, I don't know. If, do they keep track of like your most watched? Teams or something they like that. should. They really should. That'd they would be. be cool. They need number like if, two. If Lee like Pass that. did like an end of the year rap, like Spotify or Apple okay. Music, dude, that would be fire. That would be so. Hard. But they would for me. They'd be number two behind the Lakers. Like I watch yeah. them all the time. I love watching the OKC. But if yeah, if I had an audible mention, that's what it would have been. I couldn't really think of no one else. Um, but yeah, I mean, for me, number five is tough because I was flipping between this one and number four. Um, is the Mavericks? <clears throat> mm -hmm. I have the Mavericks number five just because. Listen, Luca finally came into the season the way he should come into the season, in shape, like hooping, playing like a top five player that we know he is. Like that, and along with the fact that, you know, they actually have pieces around him that fit better, can cover up some of the weaknesses that they've had for, I feels like, forever, um, especially last year when they missed the whole play-in, which was still crazy. But we <laughs> we see what it looks like when you have Luca playing at his best. You have still We still have Kyrie there, and then you have an actual competent roster around you. And you have a really good team. Like, they're being able to score with pretty much anybody in the league at any point. Luka, is, like you said, on every, on pretty much a lot of nights, he is the best player on the floor, and it's not even close. Mm -hmm. That, along with having a good team around you, this team is for sure a top-five team right now. Record says it, too. The, I'll, I'll share my reasons as to why I have the other team ahead of them, but for now, I'll put them number five. I've got them at five as well for basically all the same reasons that you said, bro. Luka, if the season ended right now today – would be the MVP, I think. I don't know if he's necessarily runaway. To me, he'd be the MVP. He's playing out of his mind. Like, bro, he's averaging almost 33, eight and a half rebounds, eight and a half assists. Like, that is crazy. Kyrie's had a couple of master classes already this year, and it feels like, eh, I don't want to necessarily say that he's more comfortable off the ball, but that fit looks better, and I don't know if it's partially just like you said because of the additions that they've made. Like the team as a whole just feels better. Last mm -hmm. night, I can't, I can't remember who they were playing off the top of my head. I will look really quick. Um, the Pelicans. It was a close game in like the third quarter, and then I look up, Luca hit a step back three, and then I look down for a second, and I hear the announcer, Tim Hardaway three, Tim Hardaway three, Kyrie three, Luca, three. and it hit like seven threes in a row. It was just like bro, an avalanche. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what we knew this team could do with the pieces that they had last year. But I'm surprised that more people weren't higher on the Mavericks. I think a lot of people were not that moved by the Grant Williams signing or um, them bringing in guys like Derek Jones Jr., Der drafting Derek Live. Like, I feel like a lot of people were like, eh, it's still going to be the same team. I think both of us were on the track like that did a lot of addressing what their yeah. needs were. Mm -hmm. Um and so I'm seeing people take victory laps for the Mavericks being this good early. I don't know if I need to jump on that bandwagon. Right. <laughs> um, but no, uh, they are my five team for the same reasons. 
Um, eight and two on the season, playing phenomenal basketball. They haven't played the toughest schedule, but look, at the end of the day, they ain't make the schedule. Um, That's right. So definitely, definitely shout out to them and shout out to Luca. Came into the season the right way. Um, and, and he's showing why he is one of the best young players. Not a young player, one of the players. best players. He's one of the best players <laughs> in, the, in the association. Uh, wow. Who you got at your four spot? Uh, four, I have the Timberwolves. Um, okay. I have the Timberwolves at four. Just And the reason why I do have them ahead of the maps is because of what we talked about before. The key wins, the big wins, like like first L uh, to the Nuggets, giving the first L to the Celtics, like that was huge for me. So that's the reason why I have him number four. I'm not gonna go too in, in depth about it. We've pretty much talked about it a lot on this episode already. Ant's playing well. Um, Jaden McDaniels is playing great. The defense is there. Rudy's playing great. Uh, de- rebound and defending. Cat is a little out of place, but like you said, still giving you 20 a night. Like they're a solid team. They're playing great right now. They got some huge wins against some really good teams. So I got them number four. Number four is actually where I have the Boston Celtics. Okay. Um, and look, they they still to me have one of I'm not even gonna say gonna say one of I think they have the most versatile roster in the NBA I, in terms yeah. of just being able to play so many different styles. If you want to play a fast paced game, they can do that. If you want to slow it down the half court, they can do that. They have some of the best isolation scorers. They have some of the best pick and pop players. They have a good pick and roll game. They can like we need to get scrappy. It needs to become a big defensive battle. We can do that too. Like they have so many different ways that there's not just one recipe to put together for them to get a win. Um, and that's, you know, been on display, you know, early on in the season, we've seen multiple different guys show out and have good games for them, um, which has been the MO for this team, like bringing in the pieces that they did and guys like drew the kind of, and Chris Stapps and like the breakout kind of of Derek white in his role last year, um, love and love and what I see from the Celtics is exactly what I was expecting from them. And like, if it happened right now today, seven game series against the Bucks, Celtics clear like pretty Not easily right now. Yeah. Um, and like, maybe it's a little unfair. They've got more continuity across the board, but I mean, hey, bro, they've had Drew and Chris Apps as long as Dame been with, with Giannis. So I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. But uh yeah, they uh I have them in my four spot, and I think I have the Timberwolves flip flop with them, and a lot of that was really just because I saw what Ant did to to, to Jason. <laughs> I don't listen, know if I can put him behind for that, <laughs> bro. I listen honestly, my list is gonna send like I I'm gonna have to explain myself, but I'll yeah three I'll have the 76ers, and granted it's sound it's gonna sound crazy uh, how I have the Celtics and the 76 or Celtics ahead of the Sixers and the Timberwolves, even though Celtics lost to both, lost of, both those of those teams. <laughs> I know it's, it's going to sound crazy, but that's also why I kind of asked you like, all right, is it ba- strictly just who's playing the best now? Or is it like mm-hmm. baked in with some of like the preseason notion, like all that's baked in for me. And at the end of the day, like you said, matter of fact, I was about to get into the, the Celtics. I'll talk about them afterwards. I have the Sixers number three. Um, obviously, could be way higher. Like, don't get me wrong, could be definitely be way higher. They're playing great. We talked about it. They did this addition by subtraction, and we talked about it when they were playing good before they even traded hard. And was like, bro, honestly, should they even try to get a star back? Should they just get pieces to fit better with around Maxi and Joel and B? And that's what they got, and they look great. They look like a great, well-run team. Um, Joel's doing, I mean, he's doing MVP things. They're not really too surprised about that, but Maxi has been playing like an all NBA caliber player. Um, they got some pieces back that just fit with the team. Like they have a really good roster as far as construction wise. And they're, they're playing good basketball. Like there's nothing really bad I could say about the Sixers. Um, mm-hmm. when I get into my number two, I'll explain why I have, you know, the Celtics higher, but for now I just got the 76ers at three. Yeah, and then like I said, I have it flipped. I have the Timberwolves at three. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time on it. We talked about them earlier, and you just you know kind of talked about them. But, yeah, look, the defense is elite. They've overcome what I thought was going to be the awkward fit. Um, Anthony Edwards, he's here, bro. He's here yeah. in full effect. Like I said, we want to talk about the best elite two-way players. You got to put his name in that, that conversation. Can't happen without him anymore. Hundred percent, hundred percent, and um, for me too, I have the Celtics. Um, I like I said, it's gonna sound crazy because the six. That's your your number two, Celtics number two. Yeah, that's my two. Okay. Yeah, I have them number two strictly because of I, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, they lost to those two teams. Yeah, but they still have won a lot of games. They're still look like a really good team, and really because of what you said, bro, they're so versatile, bro. They can win in so many different ways. They have so many elite defenders on that team, like. You and any given night, they could have like what five or six players go off for them on any given night, and it's like 
that along with the defense is not just offensively. I just I don't know if if I'd say like if it was a playoff series against the Sixers or the Timberwolves, I think I just trust the the Celtics more right now. So you can say it's kind of just like a lot of a lot of it is like preseason notion or just like how I feel about the Celtics, and I'm fine with admitting that. But um, just right now, I, I feel like I just trust the Celtics a little bit better. But I would not blame anybody for like like your list. I don't blame you for having them four at all. Like I don't blame you for having the Timberwolves or the 76ers higher than them. Right. And like, bro, I, we would be splint hairs if you're trying to really like get at it. It's <laughs> like, at the end of the day, all these teams, bro, if they got <clears throat> thrown into a bracket right now, it'd be a bloodbath. It would be a bloodbath. <laughs> in fact. So it, I, I'm not going to sit up here and be like, how is that your number two team? Like, <laughs> all of these teams have really good arguments to be up near the top of the league, which is why they're in the power rankings for a reason. Yeah. Um, I have the Celtics, at, or not Celtics, the 76ers um, in my two spot. Mm -hmm. um Joel Embiid he, he looked like he trying to go back to back he came into the season again looking determined he's averaging 32 and 11 um with two blocks and almost six assists too just low key with a 1.5 assist to turnover ratio which is not the greatest but at the end of the day bro six assists out of Joel that's not bad um the combination between him and Tyrese and like really just Tyrese's jump like he didn't even feel like a guy that should be eligible for most improved player. Like, how are you? Facts. How are you most improved? You're a 20 point per game scorer. You're already here, but right. We're talking about he could be averaging almost nine more points from last season to this season. That might be most improved legitimately. Like he really could have just made the jump from like fringe all star all star to legitimate all NBA caliber player. Um, it feels like he's gonna be a clear cut all star this year. But like I said, these. Those numbers average almost 29 a night. He just put up a 50 piece against Indiana. We have to be talking a little bit bigger than all star. Um, the defense for them has looked great. Um, guys are coming in and they're starting to bring in some of those guys from that, that Clippers trade. I've seen Batum being able to get some minutes. Um, so I, I like where this team is go going. I like the trade I said in the first place because it really has allowed Tyrese Maxey to flourish and spread his wings. He gets Tobias Harris a little bit more involved in their offense um, than, than he had been previously with, with James Harden there. So I have the Sixers at two. You can very easily see them at one, but I think we both have the Nuggets. Maybe hmm. it's a little biased from last season, but yeah. they, they still look like the defending champions. They're just like, it's nothing has changed. Like, it's, it's, I don't care if it sounds boring. Like, it's just, there's no reason for a hot take here. Like, they're, just, they're the Nuggets. Right. They're that, that good. Like, Jokic is that good. You know what you're going to get from them pretty much night in and night out. There's no reason to even, like, <clears throat> overthink it. It's the Nuggets at one. Right. Jokic is averaging 30, 30, almost 14 rebounds and eight assists. You know what's funny? Uh, Like, with, like, really great players, bro, you know when they're, like, getting to that, like, all-time great, like, one of the best ever type of players when, like, Stat lines like that, I'm just like, yeah, that's Jokic. Like, of course. You know what I mean? He could sleepwalk two triple doubles, bro. Like that's that's what I'm saying. And they're gonna like they're always gonna be a top seed. Like, that's how you know they're all time great. Like, he's always gonna be a top seed. He's mm -hmm. always gonna be in he's always always gonna have MVP numbers, whether he's in the conversation or not, because of you know, narrative and all, all that right. side stuff. He's always gonna be there. Like, and you don't even it almost becomes like so repetitive that it comes like boring almost. Like that's how you know when they're at that level. But, like that's how mm -hmm. you got with like LeBron when he was in his prime. It's like, yeah, like they're great. He's great. Right. MVP. Like, like it's so voter used to fatigue. All that stuff. Yeah. yeah, exactly. You get so used to that stuff. So that, that's how you know he's he's reaching that level for sure. Yeah, but the Nuggets look. Um, the, Jamal Murray is going to be out for I think the rest of November is what like it sounds month. like. Yeah, rest of um, November which is tough with that hamstring injury. Like we said, <clears throat> two losses on the year, one to the Timberwolves um, and then one to the Rockets last night um, in, in a tough game down to the wire. Um, but look, this Nuggets team, they still look like the defending champions despite, you know, the departures of guys who were key to their rotation last year um, in Bruce Brown um, and in Jeff Green, who also, look, shout out to him in that Rockets game. He helped close out that game against the Nuggets. Um, so shout out to him. He's still hooping. He's got to be in like what year 15 or 16 now after this is like year six after open heart surgery. Yeah, this um, is crazy. His story is crazy. Um, but look, the team looks great. You're getting guys to step up. Reggie Jackson has impressed me uh, having to step into that starter role. I'm seeing him aggressive 
taking shots, shot creation, big threes. Like he looks comfortable out there. I was always um, wondering why he didn't play. Like they didn't really play him last year. Like on the playoffs, I was too. And I, I guess it wasn't needed. Like when you trim the rotation down to that point, and then like when mm-hmm. they really needed a secondary ball handler outside of Jokic, like it kind of did fall into Bruce Brown's hands yeah. at times, which made a lot of sense because he has the capability to do that, which is why he got paid so so nicely <laughs> by Indiana. Mm-hmm. Um, but look, guys like Christian Brown, we knew we were going to step up. Ju- Payne Watson, Julian Strother, Colin Galepsi, like there's some young guys here who are coming in and making some good contributions for this team, coming in, got hot shooting. They're playing good defense. Payne Watson, I'm loving what I'm seeing from him. Like he's just the energy, the hustle, the defensive instincts are there. Um, him and Christian Brown, like they have a nice little wing tandem there. That's, you know, a nice young core that they can continue to lean on um, throughout this championship window for them. So I think that's why we, we both have the Nuggets in the one spot because they still look like a team that won the championship last year. And if that was good enough for last year, it might be good enough for this year. Yeah, man. It's annoying as a Lakers fan. It's annoying. <laughs> but, yeah, there's Greg Ray, Jokic, yeah, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Sick edition, uh, man. Sick but, yeah, that's, good. That's, our, that's our first edition of the Power Rankings. Like I said, we're going to keep them. Um, we're going to do a couple more editions. I don't know how frequently, but we're, we're definitely going to keep doing those throughout the season. And I'll keep tabs. I might make a little graphic of, like, where yeah. we're ranking, where people, you know, highest risers, highest right. fallers. See what um, changes. All right. Throughout the throughout the season. So that's going to be fun.